Uh, Ray Harryhausen's uh, was totally inspired by Charles Knight's Bushman the Gorilla from the Chicago Zoo. And uh, it was that that inspired his mighty Joe Young. And that drawing, which is very famous and unique, is over at the Natural History Museum of Los Angeles County. The exhibit from the page actually extends across the whole city to the other museum, and that very famous drawing is there. And um, I understand from Ray Harryhausen that his dinosaurs inspired Willis O'Brien's King Kong and his dinosaurs inspired uh, Disney's Fantasia, and he also was very much involved with Cecil B. DeMille, but they really came to him. He, his full concern were his paintings and his wildlife and his prehistoric, and they, they sought him out. A collection of paintings, drawings, and sculptures by artist Charles R. Knight are currently on exhibit at the Page Museum, encompassing works that highlight the influence of a true visionary. Charles Knight was the first artist to sort of combine an extensive knowledge of uh, anatomy and physiology with uh, a terrific talent for uh, art. And he kind of put the two together with his imagination he inspired so many people in our popular culture. He, you know, there are so many filmmakers out there that credit him with their inspiration. Um, people that worked on, you know, Steven Spielberg's uh, Jurassic Park uh, will credit Charles Knight as being their inspiration for why they wanted to get into working with, you know, prehistoric creatures. Uh, just an amazing, amazing artist. He was the first person, literally, to give people a sense of what these creatures might have looked like. To appreciate Charles R. Knight's influence, one must understand that for a period of time, knowledge of the prehistoric world was based upon the mere assemblage of fossil bones. It took the genius of Knight to look beyond these bones by adding flesh and fur to add dimension and to envision the complex and mighty creatures that once roamed our primeval world. In the Charles R. Knight universe, huge woolly mammoths lumber through an ice age tundra, while giant sloths and saber-toothed cats fall prey to the mighty tar pits of the Cenozoic era. In these paintings, he imagined, as no other artist had before, a dangerous and dramatic world, capturing a dynamic period in Earth's history. Some of the other items on display involve photographs and artifacts, including a few of the artist's personal items, like his wallet, as well as perhaps his most cherished personal item, one of his artistic palettes, still splashed with paint. These items share the spotlight with the main attractions, night celebrated paintings, like this one of a fierce tiger guarding its prey. That is considered my grandfather's finest big cat. And it's a Bengal tiger holding a peacock. And uh, that was painted at the Bronx Zoo and uh, in New York City. Oh, you, you mean that the tiger was there and he painted it? Absolutely, he wow. did everything from life that he could outside of the dinosaurs. Uh -huh. But he did his wildlife all from life and would go across country finding the finest specimen to paint and uh, in this case, he chose the Bronx Zoo. Was he a New Yorker like you? He was. He was born in Brooklyn, uh -huh. and he lived in New York, but he traveled the country for the zoos and the museums. Now, you actually knew your grandfather for a period of uh, some 18 years, I believe. I 
did. I grew up with him. What was he like? He was uh, very soft-spoken, very gentle. Unlike most artists, a total extrovert. Uh, he talked to everybody. He would gather, if we went to the zoo like for this or wherever, and he would be talking to me, you would have a crowd all around him. And he'd often bring 10 of them home for tea. My grandmother knew, never knew how many were going to appear. <laughs> you had a great grandmother too, in that sense. <laughs> That's right. Uh, he also um, was uh, very strong on things being accurate. His animals had to be accurate anatomically. And uh, he was a uh, great believer, which is really today's world, I believe, in preserving what we have been given, especially things like coral reefs and the wildlife and the ecology. He was way ahead of his time on that, and that was his deep concern over 50 years ago when I knew him. A painting of a leopard on loan from Charles R. Knight's own great-granddaughter is of special note based upon when it was painted. It was his last painting. It's actually the eye is unfinished because he died while painting this painting. If there's a ghost, I'll bet he's with you in that painting a lot, so. huh? I hope so. Yeah. It's, it's very overwhelming and wonderful to come here and see this beautiful exhibit of his work. And then eventually when you go back home, you'll sit, you'll look at that painting and you'll know where it was. That's right. Uh, what do you know about him and what have you heard from your relatives and from everybody else? Well, of course I didn't know him, but it's, it's interesting to me because I grew up with him, such a huge part of my life. And such, I live in New York City near the American Museum of Natural History and it's you know, a huge part of almost every New Yorker's life growing up to go and see his paintings. And um, I did grow up with his daughter, Lucy, who I called Ami, and she lived with me and brought me up in many ways. So I grew up with him as a really huge part of who I am. So you have a real conversation piece when people visit you. I do, I do. <laughs> it's something to be very excited about and proud of. And, and it's, it's odd too, because there are so many people who know a lot of things about him that I don't even know, which is exciting and it's a real grace to have that. In the decades since his death, Knight's visionary genius has equally captivated the artist as well as the paleontologist. To highlight this special influence, included is an extensive collection of works by contemporary artists inspired by Knight's influential visions. I'm the only one around that actually knew him, but I have so many Charles Knight admirers, and they call me constantly. People become my best friends from all over the United States, and they feel that they are really one with my grandfather, and they're doing what they do today because of Charles Knight. He was, uh, to say the least, an inspiration. You know, I think I haven't always been aware of that because it's been such a private thing for me because I grew up with my grandmother. But when I come, for instance, here to this museum and I see all these children and I see the wonderful video that they've made showing Ray Harryhausen and his incredible, uh, Charles Robert Knight's incredible impact on film and, and the fact that there was a day where no one had an idea of what a dinosaur looked like and now we all grow up with a sense of the history of the world partly based on my great-grandfather's art. Of course, Knight's paintings were inspired by the real specimens, the actual fossils of prehistoric beasts like these, which can be viewed at the Page Museum every day. 
Well, we're standing here in front of a uh, Colombian mammoth skeleton. This was excavated from some of our over 100 excavations over the last uh, um, 85 years here in uh, Hancock Park. Um, behind our mammoth, we have some of the Charles Knight recreations from well, that he did based on uh, his studies of the skeletal structures. Um, amazing exhibit. We basically also have research that we have done out in pit 91, we know what kinds of plants and, and uh, other smaller creatures were around during that time, and we've recreated a place to see garden out in the back uh, park as well, where you can actually step back in time, 28,000 years, and see what the environment was like. So now we have the animals, we have the environment, and then we have the recreations and the artwork, both here and at the Natural History Museum of Charles Knight. I imagine people come from all over the world to see uh, this museum, and they might be surprised to see so much. Oh, we have artists, illustrators, animators, engineers. Everybody comes to see the, you know, the, the skeletons, the fossils. They want to see the. They want to see what it was like back here. And, and the amazing thing is that these animals thrived in this environment for so many hundreds, millions of years, and and then they all, the larger ones, all went extinct within the last, you know, 10,000 years. And to witness the works of an artistic genius or to learn more about the Page Museum's current fossil research, visit Bringing Fossils to Life, The Art of Charles R. Knight, on display until January 2005.